Welcome to Buy Size Dental Marketing. Hey, Ian, hey, hey. need no introduction. Uh, you might be on more podcasts than I am in a in a, in a strange I'm, world, but I'm trying to catch up, Eric. I'm trying to catch up to you, or at least stay ahead. <laughs> if it is in fact true that I'm on more, yeah. I mean, you've done a fair amount with some offices we have that have gone out that I didn't do, and you know, you're on a good chunk of the ones that I do. So, so you're up there. But, Along that line, I think you've had more dentists on the podcast than I have. What are the three questions you think every dentist needs to ask their marketing team? What's your favorite? So I'll start with the one that we probably get most. And that is, of course, we have the new passion numbers one, but we're not going to get, we're going to mm -hmm. stick to, to marketing for now. Um, how are we measuring results? What, is, what mm -hmm. does success look like? And having been here in, in the dental marketing space for, for almost four years now, I've realized that the answer to how are we measuring results can change depending on what is actually being communicated to your client. And that, mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. I want both marketers and dentists to really, really understand. Success is what you have set it out to be tied in with the goals of the practice. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. my goals could be, I want to get as many reviews as possible over this next quarter, which is one of the playbooks that we're running with a few of my clients because they need to outbeat their competition just on reviews. So that's one thing. Now, new patient numbers is not going to tell me if I was successful in getting them more reviews. Reviews are. And how many we grew yeah. and how many we got. So I would say that when it comes to measuring results, and for any dental practice that's going to go to their dental marketing uh, company and ask them the questions, make sure you know what success looks like for you before you even go and ask that question. Because as marketers, that really helps us. We can give you the answer, um, but if we have a better understanding of what success looks like for you, that also helps the marketing company. Now, is there a world that I could not feel good about my new patient volume, but feel good about some, you know, the number of reviews I got or my SEO ranking or my impressions. Is there any, is there any world that those might be okay if I wasn't happy with my new patients? Like, isn't new patients the, the, the gold standard of how do we measure results? It is a goal. And we actually, we're going to do another podcast on that, Eric, on new patient, new patient volume collections and production and those three and how we're going to look. So stay tuned mm -hmm, guys for mm -hmm. that one. But for now, Eric, yes, new patients is very, very important. However, depending on where your practice is, will allow you to go down the marketing journey that you would like to, to go down with your agency. And, and what I mean by that is we had a practice that they had absolutely no marketing in place. Mm -hmm. uh, they had no brand in place. They, were, they had about 20 reviews. There was no SEO, no paid media strategy. As a professional marketer, I cannot jump in and say, right, guys, let's focus on new patient numbers and let's, let's go. You've got to build the base. It does yeah. not work in that way. And that's where I like to look at marketing as blocks, whether it's SEO, whether it's paid media, whether it's reputation building, whether it's even boots on the ground work. I love to compartmentalize what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that as a marketer helps me to understand, okay, I am here. I want to be there by the end of this quarter. And there could mean I want a great website up and running. The Google business needs to look amazing. Yeah. I need to make sure the basics are in place because that is my focus of success then before I am looking at, okay, how am I now going to direct hundreds of new potential patients to this website or, or via paid media or radio ad or anything you can, else you can think. For sure. If you're asking what do we measure as results, I would hope that you've been engaged with the marketing firm greater than, you know, four, five, six months. Uh, uh, certainly there's a foundation that needs to be laid or blocks, as you said, of you, you do have to have a good website. You do have to have a compelling story. You do have to have a good, consistent online presence. I think your website certainly needs to be, you know, some basics, mobile friendly and good, good call to action around the phone numbers and things like that. Once you have that base laid, I think the, the best measure of results is new patients. However, I think, you know, when you look at new patients, you can't look at it myopically. And that gets to my second, you know, question that I like to ask my team is what's happening in the market or what's happening in other practices like mine? Because hearing you got 50 new patients or you got 20 new patients or, you know, 
17. I, I think you should compare that to last month because I think that matters. I think you should compare it to what your goals are, assuming they're realistic. I think you should compare it to your year over year. So what you did in September of last year and what you did in September of this year. But I also strongly believe you have to compare it to the market trends that are happening. Hmm. Um, dentistry is cyclical. Dentistry does go ebb and flow through demands. Um, some months are slower than others. Some months are slower than others. February, and we, February historically, funny enough, we're in February is usually when we've had, heard many clients say February is usually mm -hmm. a slow month for me. Yep. And, you know, we're getting back to a more normalized return to office and things like that are, are, are heavily in place. We're getting to a more normalized year. And that's going to cause this ebb and flow to new patients and, and overall demand. And, and you know, we're, we're in the inflationary economy, uh, things like that. So, so we're beginning to see some signs of stress in the marketplace. And I like to measure results. I think, I think everyone should measure results. I mean, we, we measure results of in the agencies. We do our 360 performance evaluations. We look at projects. We look at, you know, efforts. We, we, we measure results. And an office should too. You do have to look at what's happening in the marketplace to counterbalance that because if your goal is 30 new patients and we've seen a 20% decrease in demand, it, it, it is, while I, it is aspirationally to say I'd want 30 new patients still, uh, you're going against the market and, and it, it's, it's, a, it's a quite challenging. You're not going to fight the market every, every step of the way. You don't fight it on the stock market. Why would you fight it in marketing? And it's fundamentally mm. the, same, the same thing. And then to be um, careful, what I've seen before where we've actually had clients coming back to us after going through a time like that, and my advice there to dentists and, again, to marketers too, communication during that time to say that, listen, yeah, this is going on right now. This is what we're seeing. Don't mess up a good, a good thing and something good that you have with your marketing agency because you're going through a time of slump because that handover and the changeover and then, then you get to the next company and guess what? You're still dealing with the same market. Now you want to no, jump back uh, to your old company because you like them, but mm -hmm, you need to mm -hmm. blame someone. And sometimes it's very healthy for you as a dentist to just accept, hey, this is a bit of a downtime, but I have something great with my marketing agency. It, I'm, it's so funny you brought that up. Andre and I the other day were looking at at, at our own agency's growth through the years. And do you know that downturns are actually when we pick up the most offices? And, and we hear the same story over and over. I, I don't know what my marketing team's doing. I don't know. Well, they're coming to us. They're paying a tax, right, of, of coming to us because the handoff takes time, right? I mean, I just, mm. you know, you just can't snap your fingers and be, be operationally effective. Month, uh, month uh, minimum in a best mm -hmm, case scenario. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, Obviously, I love growing and I'm happy to pick up any clients, but you do have to look at that the dentist was out there looking for a new practice because she wasn't getting the results she wanted or he wasn't getting the return investment he wanted to where when they were growing, they weren't challenging the marketing team on what results were. Hmm. And I think that's why those two questions go hand in hand to me because if you're growing, that's great. But if you found out everyone else was seeing 60 new patients a month or, or 10 more incrementally or whatever your goal was, but how many new patients you're seeing is both how you're performing and how the market's performing. And if you're growing and everyone else is growing at the same rate, your marketing team is probably not doing an effective job. If you're growing mm -hmm. faster than everyone else, your marketing team is, and it's the same. If everyone else is down 10 or 12% and you're down six or eight, that that's that's pretty good too hmm. and that's why i think those two questions go hand in hand for me to contemplate the effectiveness of how your office is being marketed um, hmm. and uh, uh the last one eric that ties back into the communication part of it and can also help with what you're saying now on the ups and the downs and the flows Mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. speaking about what are you guys focusing on? What are you busy yeah. with? Like what? A, like have that conversation. Don't don't leave. What did you? You had a fantastic term the other day, Eric, where you said when it gets to the point of now we're avoiding each other, we're not really talking. It's becoming awkward uh, and a panic. Mm -hmm. Panic. You said something along the lines of when you get to panic communication, then you know something's gone wrong. And 
I mean, I always like to think of it as, especially in someone being in client services, like, don't let it get to that point. Talk to me. Ask me what we're focusing on. Can I tell you more about how budget is being spent? Can I tell? And these are the questions yeah, that you as a he, dentist should be asking too. I, I strongly believe that I have the right to walk up to any employee on any given day ask how things are going and ask what, what are your top priorities? What are you working on? Mm. I think that's a benevolent question. I, I, I think that's an engaging question. I think that's an empowering question to ask. And when I think about that with clients, I want clients to engage us. I want them to know we're working on SEO, but more powerfully, you know, I want to be able to show them what we're working on. Mm. Here's, you know, here actually, yeah, it's so great as you asked. Here's a couple of Posts we're working on for the next quarter. Here's some some pages we're going to be adding to the site. The tech did some some optimization work on the site. Um, it, I want to be able to to demonstrate what we did to clients more than tell them. But I love for them to engage us. Now, unfortunately, either because dentists are busy or because some of them tend to be some some version of conflict avoidant, we do get like the panic, like what are you doing for me? And you know, what are you doing for me? <laughs> like that's such a defensive answer that but like that just the phrasing matters i mean how we talk to people matters and you know it's it's a funny way to ask the question but i, I still think at the heart the question is i try to close my eyes when i get it and and imagine they ask me can you tell me what the team has been focusing on and that mm. of course I, I of course i want to answer that question that's not a but that's but, addressing things early don't wait don't sit on it well uh, what, I, I get it yeah you know yeah. you're you're having a good month. You had a great 2022. 2023 was 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 amazing until the end, and things softened. And you're wanting to know what's happening. You're wanting to see results, and it's hard to ask. You know, where are my new patients? I don't have a van full of new patients that I'm running around dropping <laughs> at offices. So it comes down to these efforts that I'm taking place, and you want to make sure that those efforts match to the new patient volume. And I think that's a wonderful conversation to have. And and if if I'm focused on getting you high end treatments and your your schedule is not full, I think the marketing needs to shift to just let's get some folks in the door, let's get some D zero and five zeros. Let's there's a time and a place to market big cases. There's a time and a place to chase down reviews mm -hmm. and lay the framework and those ebb and flow through the year as the marketing changes as well as as, as your needs change. But and it's that's a great question these, to ask. But that's where those questions come in of how, how are we mm -hmm. measuring results this quarter? What are we going to be working on? Like, what does success look like? The, these type of questions is going to give you exact. You just explained it perfectly. Because I can do high production cases and have less new patients, but I earned the same amount of money. Were we unsuccessful? It depends how you measure it. It depends on how you measure it, yeah. And, and that's where just those discussions and definitely to all of our listeners, those three questions have those discussions i promise you it'll work out better uh between yourself and your marketing agency or between you and your dentist at the end of the day very well said and i think that's a great place to end and uh man a short one what's going on with us we're we're normally much we're in the 30 35 minute verbose range and today we're we're clocking you know, we're somewhere clocking. around 12 minutes no, so it's short and sweet, short, and, short sweet and sweet and get it to the point. Um, but no, we have a lot more coming this year, Eric. That's what I'm excited about. I know uh, we've got some great guests lined up. We've got some more topics in the pipeline and they, this, this will not be the last of us. They, will, they must know. We'll be back.